Hey everyone, so today I have here this A1706 2016 MacBook Pro. It's in here for repair. The customer says, the palm rest is the only problem. There's a problem with the keyboard. Can you please fix it? So we want to at least go ahead and take a look at it first and see really what the problem is with these ones. We did see that it's actually turning on. It looks to be pretty good so far, but a lot of the key presses are very sticky and they're, bottom, they're bottoming out uh, pretty quickly, pretty easily there. Sometimes there's a problem with the keyboard, the key presses just don't register, and there's a problem with the keyboard itself there. And so, uh, we always want to ask those questions about, uh, hey, what's going on with it? Has it happened before? We always want to know on the point of contact, on the point of drop off, to see what the problem is really, why it's happening, in the first place to get as much information as we possibly can to make uh, a right diagnosis on top of looking at it, right? So they came in, they did let us know that there's this problem with the keyboard. They want to get the keyboard replaced because it's feeling pretty sticky. Now, a lot of these ones, you're actually going to go ahead and be like, hey, man, I know there's a warranty program. Or wait, what? There's a warranty program? So actually, there is a warranty program on these models if you guys are interested for it. But there's a catch. We see that there's a keyboard service program for specific MacBook Air, MacBook Pros. This is the one that does have the butterfly key switches that give a problem and it's pretty much almost all the MacBooks that do have that, which is really interesting. It starts from an early uh, 2015, 12 inch, all the way down to 2019 Pros that have it. Then you see the new ones have the revamped keyboard. That's given the thing. So a lot of the problems that you ever see, maybe the letters or characters uh, repeat, sometimes it doesn't register, it feels a little bit sticky. Sticky is the key word there, right? And then what they're going to do is obviously it's it's free if, if they actually did take a look and determine that is that the cause of it if there's just basic dust maybe random debris they have to determine that first really to make that service available so this is determined after the keyboard is examined and may involve replacement of one or more keys or the whole keyboard but this is the key thing is, is it needs to be examined so we're going to be doing the same thing here we're going to go examine the keyboard and see why it's sticky so when someone comes in they tell you it's sticky what do you think the first thing is that you can think it's like hmm well, if I'm just going to drink from my water bottle here and then I spill over the keyboard or if I'm drinking soda, tea, coffee, whatever, and I just spill over the keyboard, now it's sticky. It should be covered on the service program, right? No, of course not, because there can be other problems, right? What Liquid's going to do is it's going to not just touch the keyboard, it's going to touch other areas on there as well. And that is just not a random occurrence. It just didn't, it's not a wear and tear. It's not typical, maybe some dust got underneath it. Uh, it's very easy for them that to actually happen for these models, especially if you get food, liquid, or anything else on these models to so get underneath it and actually damage the keyboard. But obviously it's a liquid spill, right? So a liquid spill is what? It's liquid. So it's going to travel. It's going to go underneath the keyboard. It's going to go find anywhere it possibly can. On the 1466, it likes to hit that backlight circuit all the time, the backlight chip. You see that one. We have videos talking about that one. And of course, it's going to do the same thing in this area too. And this is kind of what we're making the video for is we see a little bit of uh, corrosion. And we see, obviously, it did hit something important, and we were testing it. We were just making sure running it through our full diagnosis, which we do for all the machines that we do here to make sure of all the issues so you guys can make your best decisions that you possibly can. I was measuring the voltage going into the laptop, and I did see on some of the ones that it actually was giving me a problem. Sometimes it would actually short out my voltmeter. Now, we do that a lot of our testing on any type of board repair that we do. You usually see us go through the voltmeter, and I did see that it was sometimes it would short out on certain ones, sometimes it wouldn't charge, even when I plugged it in. Now, were we told that on the drop off? Of course not, because that's our job really to figure it out. But I did see that there's a little bit of corrosion around this area, and especially around the ports here. Uh, around the ports over here, there's also there's some corrosion. You see that blue and green? So, of what, and there's some actually a little bit on the board around the, this area, which is close to the uh, USB CIC, the CD 3217B. B12, I think, on this model. That's what it's called. So those can fail as well. So if it's going to be intermittent charging or the, the charger goes completely out, maybe there's corrosion on the actual port itself and obviously around the area, which there clearly is. There's a blue, bluish green there. There's actually damage. So even on the other side, which is funny too, because it's a little bit on the other side. I don't know if I can show you guys this. You see that right there, the little blue and green? That usually means liquid's been impacted there. And on top of all that, I mean, it is turning on at the moment, right? So you're thinking, well, it was working. So why are we even talking about this? What's the whole point of this video? Well, so the point of the video is when there's any type of liquid spill, um, when a customer comes in and uh, they're aware of liquid spill, sometimes they don't really tell you every, absolutely everything. They're not saying why it goes on. They're saying, here's my problem. Go ahead and fix it. So we need to always figure out what the extra problems are that might be there or might be what's causing it. Because just if you need to do a keyboard replacement, maybe it's not just related to the keyboard. Maybe there's a, some short... Maybe there's a short that's causing a problem. Maybe the, the cable's bad. Maybe the trackpad on these models can go bad and they can also make the keyboard go bad. 
But the keyboard is bad on top of this one because there's actually sticky keys and you can feel it on some of the, the keys that it's just not working. So we need to do a keyboard replacement. And now since we see there's corrosion and that there's a power issue, a charging issue as well, we need to also do a board level replacement. Now the customer was aware and they got pretty upset about it because they just wanted us like, hey man, why don't you just fix the keyboard? It's working right now. Why don't you just fix that? Why do you have to fix something else? There's nothing else that needs to fix it. It totally works. Well, it does work for now. And that's why another thing, whenever someone does drop off here, we always like to let them know because there's any type of liquid or any type of corrosion, if you drop it off too and it's powering on, there's always a chance that it may not power on after that because there's liquid, there's corrosion, who knows what it's doing. So if we did actually what the customer said and we just replaced the palm rest there, there could be corroded components underneath the, the board itself there. And while we're removing it, while we're actually doing it, um, the components can be held on by such a little piece of solder that it can actually knock off and then you're going to have a power issue and then it just shuts off and there's no power. You put it back together and oh, it doesn't work now. I wonder why. So what do you think is going to happen then? Then they're going to come back to you and say, well, you broke it, you fixed it, right? And which is pretty much right at that point because we didn't give the information in the front. So really for any of these type of ones, especially that we see there's corrosion and that there, there, there is intermittent issue right now, we need to let them know that you got to do a board level repair if we're going to be doing also polymer repair because there's lots of other problems. You can't just do that. We can't guarantee that it's going to work totally after that. The components that are corroded can give more of an issue and you, and you probably haven't told you that there is another problem on top of that. Maybe they just came in and they already know that the, that the screen's blinking and that it's not charging they're just not telling you anyway so we always have to be on top of our game for that stuff and for for people to to let you guys know so they're up they were pretty upset they actually don't want to do the whole repair because they don't want to fix the board and the palm rest there because we need to do a palm rest place and fix the board on it which i understand it's 2016 model but it does still take monterey it's still nice but uh and it does have a built-in hard i mean and everything's built into this one obviously it's still a pretty nice machine though it's a shame that they don't actually go fix it but our job is to give all the information that we possibly can to the client so they can make the best decision that's right for them and we can always help maybe with data transfers as well but it's still kind of the same issue because there's a problem now we don't know what's going to happen in the future unless we do repairs for it and re do repair on the spot and obviously we have to offer warranty on top of those repairs in case anything does happen during that time and especially as you're working on it especially if something's corroded something's turning on while you're working on it because of corrosion there anyways guys just a little bit of a uh, talk about how a tech shop looks at especially liquid store repairs and certain type of repairs um, hope you guys just learned something today just look on our end and what we like to share for you guys we always want to make the most information that we can that's part of our diagnosis policy is just to show you guys that uh, not everything is very straightforward and something could be causing another issue and that's our job as part of the diagnosis to let you guys know uh, what the problem is so you guys can make the best decision you possibly can so anyways i hope you guys were watching if you did please hit like it really does help us a lot subscribe for more content and we'll see you guys in the next video thanks a lot for watching take care be safe bye